Hello there, one and all, and welcome to episode 322 of Love at First Scent with me, Bessel is coming to you live, or should I say dead? <laughs> Sorry, I cannot be doing a whole hour of this sort of thing, and I'm already chuckling because I've been reading the comments that people have been leaving. First comment goes to DJ, who just goes, ha 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 ha, hello Count Persilais, and Konishi says, goth Persilais sounds promising. Eric is here as well, watching him from Texas. Chang makes a very, very good point about the scariness of an overdose of Ambrox. And you're all very, very welcome, whether you're watching live or you're watching the recording. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please rest assured I do not always do this kind of thing. This is quite an exceptional sort of video. But every now and then it's all right for us to um, embrace the undead and have a little bit of fun. Uh, if you would like to support my work or help me get some help, you will find a link to uh, coffee, my coffee site, in the video description below. A huge, huge hello to everybody. Um, ooh, Benji. Gosh, you've read my mind. Anyway, we will come to that. So what are we doing today? Well, uh, I thought it was time we did a top 10. And the other day, in fact, I think it may have just been yesterday, um, Madame Persilais uh, read something to me that said uh, that Halloween apparently is now uh, the third most lucrative holiday, in inverted commas, I think holiday in the, the, in the sort of American sense, the third most lucrative event uh, in the world, I guess, after... Christmas and Easter, I suppose, or maybe after Christmas and New Year's. And of course, I scoffed at this and thought how ridiculous, how disgusting, you know, everything becomes so commercial. And then I thought maybe I should do a Halloween video. So here we are. <laughs> but um, as as per usual on Love at First Scent, we are going to have fun with it, but also try and uh, tackle the, the the concept in a more serious way because what we're going to be doing today uh, to mark the approach of Halloween is to talk about scents that somehow manage to be scary that somehow manage to be frightening or or intimidating uh, or unsettling uh, and obviously this is going to be highly 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 subjective I'm just looking at the selection here and they are all perfumes that I either really really like actually so I don't know what that says about what effect I like to create when I'm wearing a perfume or uh, ones that are, are extremely intriguing and um, can you do a Sesame Street count impression as you do the perfumes no I cannot although I was tempted to do something about you know the children of the night and the, or my best Gary Oldman um, but I wanted to start with this because Diptyque clearly have also read the memo about um, this being the third most lucrative event in the calendar because they have just released a pumpkin candle. Um, I'm guessing we pronounce this uh, citrouille, is it citrouille uh, pumpkin in, in French. And, and I wanted to mention it. I haven't burnt it yet, as you can see. And, it, and it's one of those ones where you actually don't need to burn it. So I, I wanted to get it out of the way straight away because this is very, very, very potent stuff without being burnt. And I want to put it back in its box and hide it away so that it doesn't interfere with the perfumes. But um, it, it it's kind of fun in a quirky sort of way. They've definitely sweetened it. So there's a lot of sort of pumpkin pie effect going on here. It's got something quite sugary, quite vanillic. But they also mentioned chestnuts in this little um, uh, leaflet, as well as uh, mouth-watering spicy notes and crisp green accents of the fruit's flesh. So I... I totally assume that it will burn absolutely fine. I can't imagine Diptyque now with all of their experience making a candle that doesn't burn very well. I will burn it because I'll be curious to see how it fills the room. I, I should also say that we are not a Halloween-y household. I don't think I have ever, ever... Sorry, I'm just looking at the comments and getting tongue-tied. Um, I don't think I have ever, ever dressed up for Halloween, and Halloween certainly was not a thing where I was growing up as a child. So I'm still somewhat bemused by all of the sort of trick or treating that goes on because I always grew up thinking that that was an American thing. And now it is of course, so not an American thing. It absolutely happens here in England and I believe in Poland as well. So anyway, we start off with the citrouille, the pumpkin candle from Diptyque, but I will now put it away 
so that it doesn't get into my nostrils because it is potent stuff. What are you all saying so far? Hi from the Netherlands, says Eric. As soon as I spray Rien from Etat Libre d'Orange, I get an angry look from the missus at home. Hmm, we might come back to that brand. Um, Gavin says, Champs-Élysées is that scene of being chased by an axe murderer in a neon-lit nightclub while everyone disco dances around you. <laughs> That's a, some description. <laughs> is that a good thing? Uh, David says, hello, I'm late. Don't worry, we've only just done a candle, a quick mention of a candle, and we're going to start. Okay, so um, it's already five minutes. We need to talk about 10 perfumes, plus I've got a kind of plus one that isn't scary but needs to be mentioned, so we need to get a move on. Where should we start? I think, why don't we start with one of the... Actually, I'll tell you what, why don't we start with the one that I haven't got here? Because I haven't got a sample of this. So, and, and also it's the most recent release on my list. Its official release date was 2021, although I believe it kind of snuck in right at the very end of 2020. And it's brilliant. And I can't believe that I haven't got a sample. I think it's because when I had the, 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 the original small vial of it, I used it up so quickly that now it's gone and I need to get some more. And it is from Barbara Herman's brand, Barbara Herman being the author of the book, this book here, from Barbara Herman's brand, Eris, it's Green Spell. And if you have tried it, you will absolutely know why it's here, because it is the witchiest, most wicked, most deliciously wicked green scent out there. It does all of the things that you would want a green scent to do if you're looking for a kind of number 19 scent, but it takes it up to a supernatural kind of level. And as I was going through my list, I thought for each of the perfumes, I ought to try to think of something that could be a Halloween costume. And Greenspell has got to be the Wicked Witch of the West, hasn't she? By the way, I should say that um, Greenspell is made by Antoine Lee, as are all of the perfumes from Eris so far. Greenspell, yes, says Rachel. It's got to be here, hasn't it? And I can't believe I haven't got any more drops left of it. I, I need I need to, to fix that. I need to do something about that. So we've done the one, Greenspell, which sadly cannot be featured here, but you all know where to find it if you want to try it. You must, must, must seek, seek it out. It is very, very good indeed. Okay, let's go. Let's go darker. Let's let's go to uh, from twenty eighteen, and bear in mind these are just my views. Okay, I may present something to you that you don't find frightening at all. You may find it cuddly, and and you know frightening is being presented here in in quotation marks. It it does. You know these are not scents that I'm. These are not kind of necessarily run a mile scents. Okay. Um, I think the intimidating stroke unsettling descriptor is, is something that I was mainly going for. And this is from 2018, uh, Night from Acro. A lot of you know that this is a brand that I have become a huge fan of. It's a brand that Olivier Cresp set up with his daughter, Anaïs Cresp. Um, and each one of their scents so far is based on the idea of some kind of an addiction or a vice. I was going to suggest that one, says Scent Genie. I love it. And Rachel says, Night, I just got my acro sample set. Well, there you go. So let's pop Night on here. Now, Night makes very, very prominent use of cumin. And because it does so, it really only comes into its own on skin. But I'm not going to start doing the skin thing just now. Is that the cumin rose, says Eric? Well, it's the cumin, cumin, cumin. And, ah, see? just immediately this is this is the kind of wickedness of seduction okay so it's no surprise that they called this one night um because it is about fleshiness it is about sweatiness it is absolutely about either a a, a, a real one night stand or a sort of fantasy one night stand or maybe a kind of date night where where you're actually with your long-term monogamous partner but you want to kind of indulge in a sort of one night stand fantasy with each other it's 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 torrid um but fantastically so and somebody's already said um rose cumin yes it it's got it so it, it's got the kind of love aspect in in it as well the, the, the kind of passionate aspect but but the carnality wins out and I suppose there is something frightening about its ruthlessness, because this is a scent that absolutely is determined to, to have what it wants. 
and 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 nothing is going to stand in its way um i i in my head i paired this up with um morticia morticia adams as 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 very definitely as played by angelica houston um who in 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 the most kind of camp way absolutely controls every space that she's in and accepts no compromises um it is good stuff. And actually, I haven't smelt it for a while. I've, I'd forgotten how much I like this. Now, this is probably one of the most divisive of the of the acro scents. Uh, there, are, there are some people out there who absolutely cannot take it. And, and again, I guess, looking at the selection that I've got here, they are all pretty polarizing. And I suppose... And I suppose if they're polarizing, that must mean that they are pretty bold and fairly confident. And then if you extend that further, I suppose it is that that can make them uh, unsettling and, in, and intimidating, right? There can be something both stimulating and exciting and inspiring, but also both. I said both and I'm about to present four things. Okay, so you could, can't tell I'm an English teacher, can you? So let's try that again. That, that there can be something equally inspiring and stimulating, but also frightening, right? About about uh, about confidence, about extreme confidence. Um, Chang says, "I love ink." Absolutely, so do I. That was one of my scents of the summer. I love smoke, says Saint Genie. That's probably still my favourite from the brand. Um, I salute you for being able to wear that one, Mister Persilays. Unwearable to me, says Bry. <sighs> Well, I love it. Polarizing like horror movies, says Eric. Yes, I suppose so. And you know what? As a f I'm a huge, huge, huge film buff, as you know. Um, but horror is one genre of movies that I just, just don't seem to have a lot of time for. Tripti says, scary perfumes. I imagine ghost tour operators and story storytellers waft through mists of Bois d'Assas as they walk through nightlit New Orleans or Calcutta. Bois d'Assas, yeah, that'd be an interesting one. See, I find that a little bit too suave to be scary. Rachel says, ah, fascinating, stimulating and bold. Halloween is a great chance to wear our bold fragrances. Double, 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 I try again. Double, double, toil and trouble. Um, films scare me way more than, oh, sorry, spaced out. I missed your first one. Michael Haneke films scare me way more than horror movies. Yes, psychological horror is much, much more affecting, isn't it? Okay, so we're off with Acro's Night. Next, I suppose we should do the one that you've already seen if you've seen the thumbnail, so you know what's coming. This is from 1985, but it is not the oldest scent on the list. And it is, of course, the inimitable poison from Dior, composed by Jean Guichard and Edouard Fleschier, and probably a whole load of other people, but they're the ones who are officially sort of credited to it. And I know, I know, I know that the current version is not as good as the stuff that I have in, in my bottle here. I've got the, the Esprit de Parfum in one of those, you know, everlasting sprays where you have to be really, really careful not to overspray it. But if you can get your hands on the current X-ray, I think it is still pretty good. So let's 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 go back to good old Truchizna, as as people in Poland call it, because that happens to be the Polish word for poison. So where can we pop? the beautiful poison bottle let's go here um poison is scary at how it in at how it can fill an entire hall says kim banned from parisian restaurants says pradeep will it really can anybody vouch for this this claim you know i, I know how i've seen an image i don't know if it's real or not but i've seen an image supposedly from uh, the 80s of a restaurant, I think in California, with a sign outside saying pe that people weren't allowed to go in there wearing Giorgio Beverly Hills. But I wonder how true that was. Um, so, poison. Oh. Actually, in terms of its effect, not a million miles away from, from night. But whereas night does the human rose thing, Poison, of course, is all about tuberose. I nearly included another tuberose here, but I decided to go for a different brand from the one where I was thinking of doing the tuberose. Um, like, like durian fruit on the tube in Singapore, says Natasha, which is actually true. Wow. 
I need to go to Singapore. Um, this is, I mean, this this actually completely makes me go speechless every single time I smell it. It doesn't matter how many times I smell this damn thing. It is, this is, well, let me take as my, as my sort of point of departure then who I think this would be. This, for me, absolutely has to be the witch, the, the, the evil witch, the evil queen in Snow White. And I believe we're meant to call her Maleficent now. Or has she always been called Maleficent? But I still picture her as the cartoon version rather than the Angelina Jolie version, even though I think that the, the visual for the Angelina Jolie version is, is extremely um, striking. Oh, Natasha says band as in the fruit on okay okay i thought maybe the smell of the fruit was because they smell quite fecal right i've never had the pleasure of smelling one of them um emma says poison wafting like mustard gas over the dance floors of my teens ah yes we remember them well don't we so this is this is supremely gothic i mean this is this is the smell of every single bit of Piece, every single piece of sort of Victorian Gothic literature you can think of, you know, this is this is the the, the mad woman in the attic. It's maybe even you could you could imagine Emily Bronte wearing it while she's writing uh, *Wuthering Heights* or being inspired to 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 write uh, *Wuthering Heights*. It is it is gaunt, um, high cheekbones, high collars. Um, and yet also so, so, so beautiful. So this is, the, this is the kind of intimidation where you kind of just sort of have to cower and think, yes, okay, I'm really, really scared now, but you can do what you like with me and I'll probably enjoy it <laughs> while I'm being scared. I wore it at the time of its original release, says Beth. I can rarely go back to a fragrance because it carries memories. Yes, I, th I think that's true of a lot of us. And um, Memories I've made in the past and not necessarily the ones I'd like to make in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Eric says, I wouldn't say durian fruit is fecal, it's more dirty feet. We need to get off this topic and I need to smell some of this fruit. So, a gothic femme fatale, says Rachel for poison. Absolutely. Oh, Maleficent is the witch from Sleeping Beauty, says Flackiness. Okay, apologies. So, but but isn't, 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 oh, see, this is where my Disney knowledge goes. I, oh, just... So the so the Angelina character is from Sleeping Beauty. Okay, well I'm still I'm still sticking I'm still sticking with the evil queen from Snow White. Okay, this is this is um, this is who Poison is in our little top. But thank you for correcting me. I didn't realize she was a Sleeping Beauty character. Makes sense though, actually, doesn't it? The Snow White evil queen is better for Poison, in my opinion, says Gavin. Yes, absolutely. And the cartoon version always terrorized me, says Paul Perfemo. Yeah. So. If I see two bottles, that means we've done three, right? Because Eris, the, gr the green spell was number one. Um, somebody earlier on mentioned zoologist's bat, which also is genius and which could have had a place here. Um, but uh, I, I'm, I, I believe that it's, it's not what it was. And also I've mentioned it on this channel quite a few times, but absolutely bat is a, um, would be a very, very good one. But let us go for the one that I think might make an interesting alternative for a bat Halloween costume. And it's one that somebody mentioned very, very, very um, prophetically, mentioned just as we started broadcasting. So from 2010, composed by uh, Jérôme Epinet, this is MM Inc. from Byredo. Without any question, one of the weirdest um, scents I have ever smelt in, in my life, but I really, really love it, and I do enjoy wearing it, and I also love the fact that it does make me think of what it's supposed to make me think of, which is ink, up to a point. You're all talking Disney witches now, aren't you? Um, well, but there was a question. David says, resident Amouage fan checking in. Which from their line is the Halloween choice? Is it Memoir Man? See, the first one that comes to mind is Opus 5, because that's pretty scary too. But then there was there was maybe Interlude Woman, because that's pretty strange. And then there was also a phase where they went through some weird ones like... But but I forget I forget which is which in, 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 in with their names. So maybe I'm thinking of Myths. Was Myths the one that was quite odd? Anyway. M.M. Inc. from Byredo. Ha, oh, see, whoa. <laughs> That's so bizarre. Um, 
Oh, Kanishi says you tried this and it was so soft on your skin. Fascinating. So this is, this is to me really, really metallic. So metallic that it's almost blood-like. Very, very, very cold somehow as well. Um, and yet even though I say it's blood-like, it, it doesn't smell red. It smells either silvery or really, really, you know, the, the kind of silveriness that looks, that, that needs to be illuminated because otherwise it looks almost completely inky black if there isn't enough light. Um, and kind of musty as well. I'm sure there's a, there's a big kind of vetiver effect going on there too. It's, it, it, it has always, always got some kind of a comment, usually a kind of perplexed comment when I wear it. Um, but I treasure it because it's it's one of the, it's one of the most interesting things in my collection. And as I say, this would be the the, the smell of, you know, sort of traditionally just dressing up as a bat, as as just a black bat with fangs, sort of a vampire bat, I guess. Uh, Dusan says, what about Era Libre d'Orange's Eau de Protection? See, I never find that scary. I find that really, um, I find it powerful. I think Eau de Protection is the best name for that one because it really, really feels like it forms a layer of armor of rose and thorns around you. I've never I've never found it intimidating. I found it um, supportive uh, and, and protective. <laughs> Host Beef says, is Aventus on this list? And I love the fact that somebody before we even went live said, so basically this is going to be a, a, a list of 10 creeds. That's a different kind of frightening, okay? So MM Inc. from Byredo we have done. And let us now go to... What should we do next? Oh, where is this one from? Um, da -da 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 -da. Let's go to 2009, because this is this one is sort of frightening and large and huge, um, again, in a very, very different way. And this is good old, talk about cult classic, this is good old Black Afghano from Nasfamato, um, composed by Alessandro Guantieri, obviously, as is everything from that range. Um, and I haven't, I went through a phase of really wearing this a lot. And then, you know, as, as things happen, you sort of move on. Um, and I haven't smelt it for a while, so I'm going to be curious to see what I think of it now. But it was, it was something that immediately came to my mind when I thought of frightening perfumes. It's, it, it has become, I think it retains its, its cult status, Black Afghano, doesn't it? But I think gone are the days when, you could you could you could hardly find the bottle because it would sell out as soon as you um you know as soon as it got, got into the shop. See, this is interesting because I would now say that I have a huge um, problem with scents that uh, may have a massive massive overdose of synthetic sandalwoods. Um, but this was one of the originals in a way, and I think it still pulls it off. So it is it is lots and lots of things like ebonol and javanol. I don't know precisely which synthetic sandalwoods are in there, but it's those ones that are crazy diffusive, crazy tenacious and long-lasting, and also have a kind of dirty, sweaty quality to them that sandalwood actually doesn't, because sandalwood is really milky and creamy, maybe, 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 the, just the tiniest touch smoky, but not but not really. I mean, sandalwood is all about the woodiness and the smoothness and the creaminess. Um, but this, I think, because, because the top notes are so well handled and there's a really interesting kind of... It's almost like the fruitiness that you get in poison. This is in many ways actually like a poison but with synthetic sandalwoods rather than tuberose. Yeah, th there are lots of similarities, but it's also, I guess, more stereotypically masculine, um, and it's it's rougher, it's more textured, which is why for the Halloween costume pairing, I thought, well, this has got to be, this has got to be the werewolf. I'll have another sniff of it, but the, the comments are disappearing, and I want to see what Rachel said here. For us Americans, Early 20s Halloween is probably the most fun, like sexy, naughty candy and leather vibe. Francesca Bianchi, perhaps, or maybe Papillon. Do you mean as in going to Halloween parties when you're in your early 20s? Um, okay. Spaced Out says Black Afghano is one of my big dislikes. It makes my stomach turn. It, it could be. It could be because of the sandalwood notes. 
Um, Javanol makes my stomach turn, says Flacaness. Um, this is a Mary Jane based perfume, isn't it? Says Gavin. I, I believe so, which is why I think in in um, uh, some countries it's sort of banned, even though it doesn't actually contain anything illegal in it. Um, I was thinking about Eau de Protection too, says Paul Perfermo. Patchouli 24, mentioned by Pradeep, is like a barbecue. I nearly put that in here, but then I thought, no, I just find it a bit too cuddly and welcoming um, to, you know, to be on a list of scary perfumes. But yeah, Black Afghano is still still doing it. I mean, it's now sort of coming out really, really smoky and strange. And when you think of scents like Halfetti, for instance, I think they all owe a massive debt to Black Afghano. And it's kind of nice that this one is still the one that somehow does it best. Maybe it's because the other materials in there um, are of sufficiently high quality to, to support that rough, rough base. Kim says Black Afghano isn't as strong or as vivid as it used to be. Now, nah, interesting. See, my bottle is old. My bottle must be at least 10 years old, if not older. So I don't know. If it has changed, that's a shame. That would be a real shame because the whole point of it is that it just needs to be huge, right? Okay, so I can see four bottles here, which means that we have done five. I need to keep remembering that, which is perfect because we're almost at the half hour mark. And if you've just tuned in, what we are doing, just for a bit of fun, is marking Halloween with my list of the top 10 scariest perfumes. So scents that are in some way frightening or intimidating or unsettling obviously just as selected by me, highly, highly subjective. All of these lists are always subjective, but this one even more so. And um, please keep your suggestions coming because I'm looking looking through them uh, and it's fascinating. It's fascinating what it is that makes us feel frightened on an olfactory level. While you're thinking of perfumes that you find frightening, it would be interesting as well to hear what some of your non-perfume smells are that you find frightening, you know, just, just an odour that you find frightening. I'm trying to think if there is one for me, a scent that really, really gives me the shivers. I mean, I suppose, as, see, see I'm, I'm not as sensitive as some people to the smell of, of, of puke, of vomit. I seem to be able to cope with that fairly well. Um, but I need to think, I mean, there, are, there, there must be some scents that I find really, really upsetting and unsettling. Need to think about that one, actually. Hmm. Metal is an awfully frightening scent for me, says Dusan. Rotting stuff. Well, yes, I suppose, yeah, the, the, the smell of, of, the, of the water that flowers have been kept in that need, should have been changed like several days earlier. That is a, that's a really, really, really unset on a very visceral level for me is a very, very unsettling scent. Rotten potato, says Tom King. Gosh, the smell of rotting food bin, food in bins outside in very hot weather. Burning wool, says guy. I don't know if I've smelled burning wool. And of course, Mr. Elon Musk is is releasing his um, burnt hair perfume soon, isn't he? Um, Juan says, just got off work and happy made this live, but got to watch it from the beginning. Well, you could just stick with us now and then watch the beginning later on. The scent of blood which is why Black Leather Jesus by 555 is so edgy, in my opinion, says Rachel. Oh, I don't think I smelled that one. Burning wool is a great example. I almost need to burn some wool now to find out what that smells like. I mean, yeah, that, that, that would be intimidating, wouldn't it? I could imagine. The smell of the dentist's cabin. Yeah, but they don't smell like how they used to, do they? Okay, we need to move on. Let us do then number six. I'm trying to think of where to go next. Okay, let's do this one. So this isn't the original version of the scent. This is a flanker, but I'm presenting this flanker because it still happens to be my favorite, but I don't think this flanker is available anymore, okay? So the scent that I want to put on this list is, is Alien, Alien from Mugler, composed, of course, by Dominique Ropion and Laurent Bruyère from 2005. But the one that I want to present to you is the Essence Absolue, just because I really, really love it. I should say, though, that I have not yet smelt the current version of Alien. And by current, I mean since L'Oreal took Mugler over from the Clarence group. Um, I hope that it's still in pretty good shape. I'm kind of trying to avoid smelling it because I really, really hope that they haven't messed with it. But Alien Alien is, is fantastic. Of course, you could also say that actually Angel 
is scarier, but in a completely different way, right? So this is Alien. Let's pop the Alien on here. Can you still see the Afghan? Oh, yeah, you can just about see it there. Okay. Oh, Rachel's mentioning Jedi from Garlin, a transportive and at times deeply unsettling experience, though overall beautiful. Um, yeah. Now, see, this is... This one, who did I who did I come up? Yes, so for this, I thought of the robot, the female robot, the so-called machine person from Fritz Lang's film Metropolis. Um, so I wasn't thinking necessarily of a kind of living organic alien, but definitely something sci-fi, something that seems to come to us from the future, and um, something that is all powerful and really, really sort of heartlessly, ruthlessly evil, and yet somehow quite compelling. Um, if you've never smelt this, uh, then Alien, basically, in many ways, is a huge jasmine, but it's so huge that you could almost be forgiven for, for not spotting that it's a jasmine, because it's one of those things that completely gets inside your blind spot, and then you don't sort of see the wood for the trees almost. A huge, huge jasmine on a huge, huge base of a synthetic musk called Kashmiran. Obviously, lots of other things in there as well. Um, but it but it is basically this otherworldly, strange, bizarre, overgrown, metallic, android-like jasmine. And it does feel like the kind of scent that descends on you, like a spaceship, like an alien spaceship. I mean, it's the most fantastic name for, for a perfume. Um, this Essence version has always been a touch less frightening. Um, maybe maybe kind of more buxom but it's still it's still got such presence this stuff and i suppose it's this falls into the scary because intimidating because so assertive category marina says there's a beautiful monastery hewn into a mountain in egypt's village of trash we emerged from the incensey church and got lost for two hours in the rotten city it was horrific oh my goodness that's a, oh, and actually, that takes me back to when I was in Fez, in Morocco, and there were lots of tanneries in the old souk in Fez, and oh, that was unreal, the smell of those tanneries. I, I had to sort of hold my breath. I couldn't take it. I felt like I was going to retch and be sick all over the place, and yet I also somehow needed to smell more and wanted to smell more. Um, that was... That that was that was scary. That was scary. No none business or no one business says, OMG, I finally caught you live. Yes, you have. Heaven is in the house. And I literally just now got on my angel fusion in the mail and I feel like it's missing something. Ah, okay. Paul Perfomo says, fecal odors, rotting stuff makes me vomit. Never been scared of an odor, but maybe metallic notes are unsettling. Andrew says, scary by way of intimidating or imposing, I go to Tuscan leather in my mind. It's interesting. I've worn it to Halloween parties in the past. And Rachel says, oh, my husband is an expert in antique tannery processes. This is exactly right, Mr. Persilais. It's both repellent and addictive. Yeah. And, and just so strange, isn't it? So strange. Um, yeah. Alien. Alien is, is truly alien. And who was it? Was it Kylie Minogue, I think, who started one of her tours dressed up as the, um, as the, the, the the machine woman, the machine person from Fritz Lang's Metropolis. Except Kylie, I think, couldn't be, she, she couldn't never, ever be scary, even if she tried really, really hard. Okay, we're down to four in this list. So I think, oh, let's do this one. I, th I, th I think we've got to do this one. <laughs> this is, and I need to be careful with the image, okay, because the image might get banned by, um, by by the by the YouTube bots. This isn't the proper bottle for it. This is the tester, okay? So from 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 2006, again by Monsieur Antoine Lee. This is the inimitable Secretion Magnifique or Magnificent Secretions from Etat Libre d'Orange. Um, <laughs> can there be a more frightening scent? Although I think we have said over the years that we are finding it less and less strange less and less weird. Maybe we're coming a little bit more used to how it operates. Let's make a bit more space. Let's move the gothic candles away. Actually, no, I shouldn't do that because that's going to that's gonna get the video banned. <laughs> oh, 
it hasn't had that effect on me for a while. I think it's because I, I was kind of thinking, oh, just get, don't be silly. It's it's not. <laughs> if you've never smelt this, okay, if you've never smelt magnificent secretions from Etat Livre, you are probably aware of its of its infamy in the perfume community. A lot of people think that that it's that its um, scariness or its strangeness has been overplayed, and a lot of people do wear it and pull it off really well. And you know, it it still does very well for the brand, as far as I know. Um, but boy, so the whole idea behind it, I believe, was for it to um, be the smell of all of the substances that the body secretes. And I think that, or all, all, all of the ones that, at least in French, start with um, the letter S. And so that's why you've got blood in there. There's a very, very weird, strong metallic note, but you've also got semen, you've got saliva. Um, is there anything else? I, 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 don't think, I don't think sweat starts with an, with an S in French, does it? Um, <laughs> But it's the metallicness, I think, of it that's so strange. It's like, and, and you realise when you allow yourself to get a little bit closer to it, that actually what it is in many ways is a huge, huge, huge marine note. It is so hyper ozonic that somehow that turns into metallicness. Um, and, and then once you start getting past, you realise that actually it's, it's 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 a fairly familiar kind of white floral, but it is it is it is hard to get past it. What are people saying here? Um, behind all this blood, says Flacaness, there is a creamy iris note that I really like. Uh, absolutely, it it is a floral. Um, Woozy says, trust me, somber is I don't know how many zeros you've got there. A hundred thousand, a million times worse with its rotting corpse and vomit accord. Somber, who's that by? Um, Soudeur is sweat in French, says Mr. Raspop. It also maybe, maybe, maybe it is sweat then. Um, Nuit d'Orient by Corrie's Salome is a musty incense that's a little creepy old house with dusty creaking floorboards, says Drawn by Sense. Thank you very much. That sounds good. Um, not a fan of marine scents, says Saint Genie. Uh, Tripti Pillai says, didn't Antoine Lisa, he also added or wanted to add milk notes, as in because milk is a human secretion? Yes. And I think you're right. I think it is meant to contain a kind of human milk accord. Um, Azurone, is it called? The marine aroma chemical, says Flacaness. I don't know. I don't know which one is specifically in here. Um, and Benji says, somber is from strangers' perfumes. Ah, okay. I don't know that one. Yeah, it's still so, so bizarre. So, so, so bizarre. Secretion magnifique. Well done to Eta Libre for continuing to, to, to let us smell it. Now, oh, and the, and the costume to go with it. Have I done all of them? So, so Eta Libre, I thought, because it's meant to be so fleshy, because it's meant to be blood and semen and sweat and what have you, then it's got to be a skeleton costume, right? You would dress up as a skeleton and then to just completely throw people off the track, you would spray yourself with Secretion Magnifique because that would be the smell of all of the things that a skeleton doesn't have. I hope I did the, the, the costumes for all of them. If I haven't, then just remind me. Okay, we've got three to go and a plus one. So we need to get a move on. Um, okay, let's do, let's do, let's, let's do the devilish one. Let's do the devilish one. This is from 2019 by Christopher Sheldrake, La Couche du Diable from Serge Lutens. And this one, I think, in a way, is probably, probably actually the gentlest one, probably the least overtly scary one on the list, I think. But I think I think it deserves a place. I think it qualifies. Um, it's big love for this one, says Kanishi. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I mean, I love it too. The scariest surge that I've tried is Serge Noir, says Space. That, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. This one is rather suave, says Rachel. Yes, it it, it has got the smoothness to it, but I think I I I still find stuff about it that I can't work out that I do find unsettling because on on at a basic level it's just it's just a really nice kind of resinous labdanum scent with a nice floral note at the top but there is this darkness that comes into it sometimes um smells a bit like cola in my opinion says jazz bob <laughs> fair enough 
I find Coca-Cola extremely scary, if you ask me. I can't remember the last time I had any Coca-Cola. Um, there's something, I think it's something in the fact that it it smells burnt, as though, you know, like, like one of those, like, like a strange kind of surreal moment in a film where you see something, you see a scene that looks pristine, but then you realise it's all been an illusion and actually what you've been looking at is is the the ruins of a house or the ruins of a location or the ruins of somebody's body, you know, like some kind of rotting corpse. Um, the incense in it and the pine accords do it for me, says Zach. Yes, it's it's that it's that kind of thing. Um, it's it's kind of it creeps me out this one, and I suppose that's why it's here. It's not. It's not, you know, looking at from behind the door and going boo and having fangs in your mouth type scary. It's a much more subtle type of scariness. It's uh, unsettling. Unsettling, I suppose, is the word. Uh, De Profundis, says Freddie, has all sorts of dark, rotting, gothic melancholy going on. Uh, Konishi says it sometimes verges on caramelized pecan, oily and burnt. Um Yes, or uh, Rachel, good point. Rachel saying it's the devil convincing us he doesn't exist. Yes. So, you know, you're you're being seduced by somebody and then it's when it's far too late that you discover that actually it's been the devil all along. Um, yeah, that's a good one, Rachel. Thank you. Thank you for that. So that one, that one maybe is the outlier on the list. You know how we always have to have an outlier. Um, but I, I think I think it deserves a place on here. Okay. Two to go, two to go. So let us turn to, I think I will save the oldest one for last. So from 2014, um, composed by Mathilde Laurent, this is La Panthère from Cartier. Still such a gorgeous bottle, I think. If you've never seen the bottle, have you seen how in the inside they've actually got this faceted panther head? Really, really beautiful. One of the best sort of recent mainstream bottles. Uh, let's spray it. Now, in case you're wondering, because I'm sure somebody's going to ask, this is the EDP, okay? Um, I used to be obsessed with the original Dior Poison, says uh, Shahad. I used to wear it to kindergarten. He used to wear it to reception at school. <laughs> What did people say? I can't imagine wearing poison. So does that mean, that must have mean you were like four or five years old wearing poison. Can you remember why you were obsessed with it? That's fascinating. There's got to be a story there. There's got to be a story. Is this a sexy kitty costume, says Gavin? Yes, I think it's got to be, hasn't it? But, but, but kind of grown up as well, you know, sort of dangerous, very, very dangerous kitty costume, or maybe, maybe like a leopard costume or a, why don't we just say it, a panther costume. My son wears perfume to preschool, says Rachel. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. You know, I'm, I don't want to sort of say I think there's anything wrong with it. But wearing poison is, is quite something. I want to find out what the story was there. Um, Rachel, are you able to share what it is that he's wearing at the moment? I love the idea of kids wearing perfume to school. I mean, we, we all did it in the Middle East. Absolutely everybody wore it. So La Panthère, in case you don't know, is, again, to kind of bring it down to its essence, it's a, it's a gardenia that are really, really sticky, heavy, fleshy, honeyed, um, dense Venus flytrap of a gardenia. So if you could imagine like a gardenia crossed with a Venus flytrap, this would be it. Um, it it's, um, I, I love the fact that it still exists in the Cartier range. I love the fact that every Christmas they do some kind of a sort of special edition of it, because I must confess when it came out, I loved it, but I, I didn't think it would be around for very long. Um, I thought it would die a death because people would find it too bold, too big, too, you know, too too scary, too distinctive. But it, but it's still around. Um, and I'm really, really pleased. And yes, it's this stuff has got claws and it has teeth and it has attitude. And the panther image is, is, is fantastic for it because there is also something really, really slinky about it. Oh, Rachel's son. Lately, he's been choosing vintage Bijan for men. Goodness me. I remember that when it came out. That's amazing. That's amazing. Don't let him use up all your vintage stuff, though. He has good taste, Rachel says. Yeah, I would say so. Wow. Get him, get him started on a YouTube channel now. 
just think what might happen, you know, by the time he hits 18. Do it now. My friend's son is wanting to wear her scarlet poppies, says St. Genie. Yeah, see, kids have the best taste. Um, but yeah, La Pantère is, is unquestionably beautiful and quite haunting and totally seductive. But also, you do not mess with this beast. You absolutely do not mess with it. Best smelling preschooler in the USA, says Antonio. I would have thought so. I would have thought so. Um, yeah, and I haven't smelled Pontaire for a while. It's just thick. It's just so fleshy and dense and brewed. You know, this is like the witch's brew as well. The witch is from Macbeth. And finally, 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 although we will do a plus one, the oldest one on the list is actually from the 40s. Now, I don't have a version from the 40s. I wish my version is fairly recent. But having smelt uh, it at the Osmotech, I think we can sort of say that this version is pretty good from the legendary Germain Cellier from 1944, from Piguet, it's Bondi. And I decided um, that we have to have a, a Dracula scent. And we 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 could have we could have gone all sorts of ways with with Dracula, but I thought I thought no, actually, you know he would either go super super suave, uh, because he would have to be you know extremely seductive and irresistible, but when he's in full on vampiric mode, I think something about the idea of dead skin, which is basically what leather is, right, would mean that he would have to go for a classic aggressive angry, no-holds-barred leather. So this is Bondi. Oh, such good stuff. Sultan Al-Mansuri says, love, love, love Bondi. Yeah, so do I. And I should wear it more, actually. One of the most beautiful perfumes I've tried in its vintage form, says Paroli. I mean, it is, it is amazing, isn't it? So again, for those of you who don't know, this is considered to be one of the VVV classic leather scents, one of the ones that, you know, um, set the bar um, and, and people aspire to, to, to recreate in terms of its, its artistry and innovation. It uh, makes heavy use of a particular synthetic material called isobutyl quinoline, or IBQ, if you want to show off when with your, with your perfume friends. You can smell isobutyl quinoline as well in scents like um, Antaeus from Chanel, and more recently in Rose and Cuir, or Rose and Leather from Frederick Mal. It's, it is aggressive. It's got claws. It's muscular as well. I mean, this stuff it's like it's like you know leather on steroids and it's almost like it's almost like the the leather kind of wanting to come back to life from the dead it also has a green quality to it it's got a sharp loud rough boisterous quality to it um what about the supreme version says woozy i'm glad you asked me that because i like that too so the supreme version is one that i think started off as a harrods exclusive it was like meant to be a sort of modern take on in on Bondi and I think it works really well it is perhaps not as in your face and not as rough around the edges but well worth checking out well worth checking out um Gavin says I think Dracula would be more rose violet oh I like it incidentally rose violet is supposed to be the smell of incorruptible corpses and the stigmata of Padre Pio really the stigmata have a smell of roses and violets interesting Gavin, says Rachel, yes, and I'm inclined to agree that that is interesting. Rose Violet, yeah, but he wouldn't, Dracula wouldn't be lipstick rose, and I mean, rose I would go along with, I mean, I suppose, maybe, you know, what's like a really, really sticky rose, like maybe, um, maybe, what was um, Vero Kern's rose called? Actually, Vero Kern's Onda, now that's a scary perfume too, but yes, I don't even know if it's being made anymore. Okay, so we have done our 10, but we started with a pumpkin candle from Diptyque, and I thought, well, we would need to finish with a pumpkin perfume. Now, I don't find this scent scary at all, which is why it couldn't be in the list, but for the sake of Halloween, I think we need to mention Etat Libre d'Oranges, like this, from 2010, uh, created by Mathilde Bijaoui, 
but in association, in collaboration with Tilda Swinton, whom I saw on the streets of London a few weeks ago, not far from BAFTA HQ in Piccadilly. And it's so sort of unsettling and weirdly discombobulating. If you see a famous person, <clears throat> a lot of the time you recognize them and they don't look like how they look on TV or on the cinema, but it's kind of even more unsettling when they really do exactly look how, the, how they look. And she just looked completely like Tilda Swinton with her super, super short platinum blonde hair and her you know, long green dress. Um, and I nearly, nearly sort of went up to her to sort of tell her how much I admire her work. But, um, but she seemed to be very, very busy. She seemed to be really, really preoccupied. So what did she smell like, says RN. I didn't get that close. Now, if you don't know, like this was uh, also inspired um, by the line. The words like this come from a poet, and oh my goodness, I'm going to forget who it was now. I'm going to say Rumi, but maybe it wasn't. Somebody can correct me. Uh, they, 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 there are two words. Oh, thank you. Says it, it was Rumi. Uh, says jo, jo M68. Thank you very much. And it, it's a very, very orange perfume. It is a genuinely pumpkin-like perfume, and it's got ginger and pumpkins and carrots. It's almost like they wanted to put, because 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 at the time I think Tilda Swinton was also famously ginger herself. Um, and they, they just wanted to express oranginess in a perfume, but also make it really, really soft and gentle and delicate and loving. And I think they succeeded. It's one of the best from, from Etat Libre. It, it won awards, as far as I can remember, for Mathilde Bichabi, and, and rightly so, because it, it's, a, it's, it's a true original, or at least it, it, it was a true original at the time. Um, yeah, a really good one. So, a little bit of fun, my dear children of the night. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you go off and make beautiful music on Halloween. I will not be marking it in any occasion, except maybe I'll allow myself to have some an extra dose of chocolate. Um, thanks very much indeed for watching. Stay tuned to social media for details of more videos coming your way. And yeah, I guess all I need to do is click on end stream. Be good. Do not go exhuming any corpses, okay?